Hello everyone, uh, just wanted to show some of my M1 uh, collection here. Uh, got my Garand up top as an H&R, so 50 something, I forget what it is, but uh, some of the bayonets is what I was showing you today. Uh, picked this one up last night at auction. It's an OL. Does have some damage, uh, some little rust on it. Uh, wear, on, wear on the blade. Uh, this is as found condition. Nobody's done nothing to it. I think it's been like this since the war. Wherever it come from, uh, what theater. But uh, you see that's bent. But it still functions. It'll go on the rifle and all. I tried it out. See that side's a little dirtier. It's been laying on that side for a while somewhere. Uh, this side's not too bad. Not sure if you can see the markings on there or not. Uh, it's not the best of camera phones. But it's an OL 1943 uncut. That's a scabbard. Flaming bombs on there. A little rust on that. But you can see this side. Same size as the band that matches face down. Oh, then I have a UFH 1943 here, uncut, scabbard. And then this is a UFH, UFH uh, what's that, 10 inch blade that is produced, no date on it, just, U, just the UA, UFH markings. There you go. With the scabbard. Then I got a M5 here. Nothing special about those. Except uh, I did find out watching some videos why they put this big button on there. It's because uh, guys complaining with gloves on in Korea and cold climates. They couldn't hit this little button very, very easy. Hard to get off with gloves on. So they put the um, big button on there. And of course, this could only be used on the M1. It can't be used on Springfield 03 or nothing because of the nub for the gas plug. Then this is unmarked. I believe this is South Korean make. Or they took a, some of the bayonets we give them or whatever, loan them, cut them down. It is, I believe, a cut down bayonet. But there's no date or name on it. They, they narrowed the blades. I think they took the markings off. They're not as wide as the other, other blades either. No, uh, not, not, quite, not quite. They're a little narrower. Closer to the uh, M5 bayonet. Scabbard for the M5 and Craig Jorgensen bayonet right here. It is a, I don't remember the date on that. 18, 1896 or 98. I had to get the loop out and look at it again. It's a little, a little worn. That's the scabbard came with that. Uh, this pawn shop knife bayonet I'm sorry pawn shop find um, this was a auction auction I paid like 15 bucks for that um, the guy that put it in the auction he was telling me he paid for like four for it at auction at a yard sale I believe you gotta look folks I mean that's all there is to it this stuff ain't gonna fall in your hands um, this was a pawn shop, same as the Craig Jorgensen, same pawn shop. You got to go back, check inventory changes, right? Uh, I'll even try to go over the prices with you, what I paid for this stuff, if I can think of them. Uh, this was $45 last night for the OL. Of course, if I sell these, that's not going to reflect the price at all. It ain't, for, it ain't what I get for them. It's what I can sell them for if I sell them. Um, I do like the idea of both of these 1943s uncut. I mean, don't know. 
you know, marked and dated. Um, yeah, 45. This one I actually think I paid 25. 25, I want to say, at a, at a pawn shop. I should say the receipts on this stuff, but just a couple of years ago I got this one. But I actually believe it was only about 25 bucks. This one here I paid at the pawn shop, I believe it was 50 bucks. That's the UF, UFH. No date. Took the handles off. There's nothing on the handle either. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, the, the M5, I'm not sure. I think I paid about 10 or 15 bucks for that at, at, at the auction. This one, I, like I said, I paid about 15 bucks for that. And the Craig Jorgensen, I paid 40. No, actually, it was 30. I remember this was 30 bucks at Pawn Shop. I thought that was neat. And you got to be willing to deal haggle fucks because I think they had it marked for like, um, I want to say 50 bucks. Or what wasn't marked. And we talked about it. And, uh, of course, I like them. They like me. I, I come in there, I buy stuff. Um, we know each other pretty decent, I guess, for customer or retailer. But, uh, yeah, that's my finds. I just thought y'all would like, like to see it. On the, uh, go back to the OL. The rest of these are in real, real, I'd say real good shape. The UF, UFHs and stuff, and the Craig Jorgensen so so. But hell, it might have been with the Rough Riders. Who knows, you know? But, uh, this one ain't in the best of shape, but it is an OL. So, the Oneida Limited. Um, it's dry. I haven't oiled it or nothing yet. Like I said, I just got it last night. Um, some surface rust on it. Uh, this was a darkened blade, blue blade. Uh, I know some guys, you know, some of these were in the white early models. This is just wear on this one. Nobody's tried to take the finish off or nothing. You might be able to see some of the machine grooves. It is an original. It's not a reproduction. That's a little bend there. Uh, top of the handle here. I don't know if somebody's beat something with that or something. It fits the rifle, though. It'll go on the rifle. I tried it. It was a little tight at first, but I think it's a bit due to the surface rust in there. Uh, this is the worst side of it. It's been, like I said, it's been laying somewhere, I don't know, in a barn or something. Who, who the hell knows, right? Some rough, little surface rust on it, but I did, I did that to the screw myself. Huh? Trying to take the handle off. I didn't put no PV blaster or nothing on it. I should have first. Screwdriver slipped and scratched, put a shiny edge on the screw head there. But uh, I never did get them off. Just wanted to see what kind of shape it was under the handle. But um, if you can see it there, barely. It's your OL 1943 Flaming Bomb. This side, you can't see it. You'll never be able to see it on this phone, but uh, I did put the loop on it. You can see the end of the cannons. Uh, cannons here where the uh, cross cannon mark is. Uh, it's, it's offset a little bit up right over here. But um, It's not in bad shape. Could be a lot worse, right? I don't think nobody sharpened this thing since it was bought surplus or some guy brought it home after the war or whatever, you know. I don't think nobody's messed with it. The edge is pretty good on it. But it's not boogered up or nothing. Just that surface rust. and Hey, maybe some guy's got a Garand in rough shape, an original unfinished Garand. He might want to put that on. It's been through a theater, you know. Hey, this thing might have been island hopping through the Pacific or all over Europe, you know. You never know. You know, we all wish we could get it from the guy who carried it. Did he stick somebody with it? Didn't he stick somebody with it? Who knows, you know, right? It's pretty much the same with all these. Like I say, the Craig Jorgensen, you know, this does not fit the Grand. It probably could be made to fit, but it 
it uh, won't quite won't quite go over fit and fit over the um, in there with the gas ring and all it's, it's offset a little bit the holes not quite big enough like I say I believe if you board that out or you know ground it out you could probably make it fit it does fit back here um, but yeah that's that doesn't fit the that doesn't fit the grand if anybody tells you the Craig Jorgensen fits the grand maybe some of them do I'm no professional at this but uh this one didn't fit mine how about that and the M5 you know it fits that grand good the only you know the only thing is it it, it fits real good but it can be taken off so easy. You know, it's some guy parry your rifle and grab that button and take it right off and stick you with it. <coughs> but hopefully you'd never be in that position, but unfortunately a lot of guys did get put in that position. One thing, uh, bayonets can do their job forever. Rifles run out of bullets. But uh, anyhow, that's my little uh, video. Maybe maybe I made it too long, but uh, sometimes I talk too much. Got any questions or anything? Leave me some comments. I'll see if I can answer them for you. Um, as far as values go, the OLs, you know, in, in good shape. I think they're up around the $300 range or somewhere in the shape this one's in. I'm not sure. It depends on who wants it, you know, and how bad they want it. But I'd say at least a hundred bucks, you know, no less. I, I wouldn't take no less for it. Same, same with the uh, UFH, 150 bucks, a couple hundred bucks, because it's in, it's in pretty good shape. It's not in, not in new shape, but it's in pretty good shape. And 75, 100 bucks on this one, you know. Like I say, I, I'm no professional. To, just from what I've seen, you know, that's all I'm going by, the M5s, anything, you know, whatever you can get for them, I guess. The South Korean bayonet, I'm not sure. Um, the guys probably be willing to pay 40, 50 bucks for one. You don't see them every day. They were pretty common for a while, from what I understand. As I'm sure at one time all these were, except for the OL. Craig Jorgens and bayonets, if you, hell, if you were around buying bayonets back then, yeah, you probably could have picked one up for a dollar or two dollars, you know, but not no more. And I'm pretty sure they've dried up. These, I mean, the pawn shop finds, auction finds, pawn, uh, pretty much auction finds could be people cleaning out of the state, uh, collectors cutting down, retailers, uh, guys has been dealing at tables and stuff at gun shows and stuff, getting just getting out of it due to age. Um, I will say the OL bayonet the guy is a dealer that goes to uh, shows and he's getting he's pretty much getting out of it he's an old vietnam guy and to talk to him he was involved in a lot of stuff uh, i don't remember exactly what he said he did but um he wasn't a run he wasn't a run the mill guy and he, he just likes dealing with this stuff um Pretty much, you know, uh, pawn shops, same deal. Um, not really whole estates, but somebody died a lot of times. Old guy died. Grandkids get this stuff and all, you know. They don't know what to do with it. I found stuff in the trash on the side of the road with coins, stamps, and everything where people just cleaned the house out and threw it out by the road because they didn't want to deal with it. Um, but yeah, I mean, like the Craig Jorgensen, you know, doesn't fit a Garand, doesn't fit a Springfield. How many people do you know that have, have a Craig rifle, you know, that sure there's plenty of them out there, but most of them are in some old guy's safe and nobody really knows he's even got it. It'll be there till he dies and they can get in the safe and get it out and sell it, give it away, grandkids or whatever. <laughs> but yeah, a lot of these, uh. 
M1 bayonets. Um, I think the market, you know, is is really coming back around a little bit due to your veterans dying off and stuff. And a lot of those guys, same as guys coming back nowadays, if they could have what they had over there, they'd like to have it, you know. But unfortunately, they can't bring back stuff and buy stuff like they did. They can buy AR-15s. They can buy fully auto ARs if they got the bucks. But uh, the bayonets and stuff, you know, they have to get them through surplus and all, just like we do. I see figure a way to get one out. Of course, that happens all the time. But uh, yeah, due due to the, just the um, even the guys that wasn't in World War II that collected this kind of stuff, you know, they're failing health. They're just, it's their time. And that's what makes a lot of this stuff come back around is uh, just the circle of life, you know. Grandma, she don't know what to do with it. Grandkid, like I say, they don't know what to do with it. But uh, anyhow, thanks for watching. Like I say, got any questions or comments, thumbs up, thumbs down, whatever, appreciate it all. Don't want to agree with everybody. I don't want everybody to agree with me. And it's one side of society. So, thank you for watching.